let us assume that there is an application one this is an application which is exposing a rest api endpoint and we are going to call that particular api endpoint internally the request passes and goes through another application which is application 2 and then the response comes back or maybe application 2 connects to application 3 and then it tries to get or pull some other information after the response comes back to application 1 the request needs to go through a queuing system into application 4 and application 1 waits or polls the application 4 for the corresponding results or the terminal state now what happens during the whole cycle is we are ending up into a increased end-to-end -end transaction latency so the whole time for a transaction to take place to connect to different systems in collecting different information and then collecting them and then giving that back to the user we call this as end-to-end -end transaction latency now this particular type of transaction is called a long-running transaction when we have long-running transactions we need to make sure the end-to-end -end latency or the api latency or the api response time is reduced now how do we eliminate all these let me introduce you to workflows instead of using a single synchronous request we can go with asynchronous requests or workflows using which we can solve this particular problem now let me show you the same example by using workflows imagine the app one is going to create a new product so i'm sending a post request with a new product information now application one responds back with a product id which it generated and also it gives the status of that particular product as creating so what this particular application is telling the user or the client is that i'm going to create this particular product i got a request i'm going to create this particular products and the current status of the product is creating i'll create it but you will have to know and you'll have to query me to know the status now what happens under the hood is application one is going to create a new product workflow so i'm just calling this as a create product workflow so application one on the back of creating and persisting the status as creating for a product id it's also going to push this message into a queue or it's going to do another rest endpoint call to a application two or maybe another service so just for reference i'm mentioning application one you can also have this as service one service two etc now what that service two or the application two does is it's going to have a particular task to create a new product so it got the message or an event via a queue from application one to create a product and it has product information so application two's task is to create the product so it will create all the product information but meanwhile it might require some information from application three right so that is another task where it needs to get capacity information for that particular product so do i have enough capacity so that i want i can reduce the capacity of the product or I have, if i am creating a new order i want to reduce the capacity of uh, that particular product from the um, inventory so i can call another service and then i can get that response back now the same application too again is going to trigger another task which is going to replicate the product in all different servers so i created the new product i created the product information but then i realized that i have different regions uh, i have deployed my code to different regions i want to replicate the product information to all the regions right or all the servers so then again app 2 has to call another service which is again a synchronous call but then in order to understand that the replication is completed i cannot wait for uh, app 4 right so i'm going to pull app 4 to get the information this is just a complicated example which i have given of course you can make uh, another queue so that application 4 can publish an event to a, a, a queue saying that all the replications are completed but i just wanted to show a mixture of queuing system resynchronous calls asynchronous calls and also polling system so this is how a workflow can be created now if you look at it user did not wait for our request so the end-to-end -end, uh, api latency or the end-to-end -end transaction latency of that particular api is now separated so we have triggered uh, api specific latency and also we have triggered the backend specific latency and we have triggered that into a separate workflow specific latency now what happens if the user does a get after this whole workflow is completed right so if i do the if so if the user does get product uh, with the product id one he gets an information about the product and also is the status stays created if the product did not get created by that time the product still shows creating or maybe we can have intermediary states for example from app 2 to app 3 if let's say something is stuck there or we can even mark that as 
capacity being created or uh, replicating right so for example we are replicating to different servers so we can change the state from creating to replicating so this depends on how we want to expose our uh, internal states to the external customers this is how you can convert a long running transaction into a workflow and this is how you will define a workflow do let me know in the comment section below if you are using workflows in your current project or if you have worked on any workflow what i'm going to do now is i'm going to show you some of the workflow frameworks um, which some of them i have used some of them i have seen people using it um, all right so i've just picked only few of them which are open source and some are commercial as well so let's go through that list one by one so the first one and the common one which a lot of people hear these days is airflow airflow is a python based platform right it is now under the apache platform it was created by airbnb i believe so using airflow you can create acyclic uh, um, graphs right i mean you can create uh, workflows with different tasks and you can assign dependencies to them and then you can control them so for example this is how you can assign a graph you can have different tasks and then you can assign workflows so basically it's it's just a workflow which you can execute uh, similar to what we did in the example here right and uh, the good part about airflow is it's a platform you can deploy this into kubernetes you can deploy into anything um, any any uh, vm or container or in, in fact into kubernetes as well and it can spin up internally pods and spin up tasks etc on its own so this is airflow you can use it only as a platform so the next common one is kamunda so kamunda is another uh, popular workflow orchestration tool um, there are different terms which people use orchestrator or workflows so workflows and orchestrator obviously they do go together so Kamunda is a workflow orchestrator using which you can um, trigger workflows similar to how you did it in airflow you can use Kamunda as well the advantage of Kamunda is you can um, use it as a library as well so you can use Kamunda by integrating a library in your java application if you have a spring boot application already you can integrate kamunda into it and then trigger workflows using kamunda you can do that there's also kamunda cloud a separate cloud platform uh, where you can run kamunda as a SaaS product similar to how you have it um, uh, run as a library or within the platform that is kamunda the third one is uh, netflix conductor netflix has its own uh, again open source and commercialized version of conductor so that also does the same thing similar thing to airflow it has its own advantages and disadvantages but all these platforms provide a ui and then using which you can see the um, workflows and you can control them uh, there is one dead easy one which is similar to a rule engine it's called easy rules it's uh, called the simplest rule engine this is also a type of uh, workflow orchestrator or a rule engine a lot of people if they want to do lightweight tasks as a workflow they can use uh, easy rules it's based on java so you can easily integrate it into any java application for machine learning enthusiasts or data scientists there is a framework called metaflow which is exactly similar to these uh, workflows uh, but you can use it for running machine learning workloads these are already used by netflix and you can see that they are uh, integrated with aws and kubernetes if you have a node based application and you want to run workflows in node then you can use n810.io uh, this is again uh, the same workflow it provides similar kind of features what other platform provides but all these are node based uh, tasks so you will write the code in javascript and then you can run them on node the final one which i want to show you guys is uh, the jbpm the classic way of uh, running business process management uh, the whole workflow concept or the orchestration concept case uh, came from the whole business process management right where they had end to end workflows there are different steps tasks etc right so um, jbpm is a toolkit for building uh, bpm applications you can use it for running different workflows and creating those workflows and then tying them together and then running them as a server client these are the different tools which are available for you to use as workflows i hope you got to know uh, a new thing about what is a workflow if you have not used workflow i hope this was uh, something new for you if you're already using workflows do let me know which workflow orchestrator are you using which workflow framework are you using and how are you using it and also let me know which one should i try uh, and show you guys in the coming weeks as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video Thank you very much.